Hey there viewers, thank you for tuning in to Super Mario Diagnostics once again. Today we are working on a 2009 BMW 328i and the customer's concern is that it has a parasitic draw and it seems to be a heavy one. I put a maintainer on it and it keeps pulling 20 to 30 amps at all times. I went ahead and did the preliminaries which is uh, open every single door, the trunk, the hood and manually close all the latches or close all the switches that would think that would make the, com the vehicle think that anything is open. Uh, that's first things first make sure uh, all your latches are closed and uh, let it sit let it go to sleep um, I forget what the that it, um, the designated time is for these but it's been over half an hour already uh, way well past half an hour already and the first thing I always do with parasitic draw testing believe it or not is hit it with a uh, thermal imager do a complete scan of the entire vehicle with a thermal imager and I also went ahead and prepped the glove box open because uh, those of you who are familiar the junction box electronics module the f basically the smart fuse box is housed behind the glove box itself they already have a second battery so that once we fix the parasitic jaw we could go ahead and install it um, and it's it's came from another shop they um, it came for other reasons as well which we already fixed and now we're dealing with the parasitic draw so Let's go ahead and grab the thermal imager and see what we find with just a quick scan. And mind you, this vehicle has been sitting here since yesterday after we, we fixed the first phase, which was a crank no start. Uh, the customer went and gave, ahead the go, gave the go ahead to do parasitic draw testing today. So it's been sitting cold. You do not want to do a thermal image scan when the vehicle has been uh, pretty cold. I did have to move it from bay to bay, um, but everything should be pretty cold. So let's go ahead and hook up the thermal imager. How do you like my knee, my little rig here? I've got my iPhone with a clamp so that I can use my other hand if I need to. Um, I, I sometimes surprise myself, I gotta be honest. Um, I will be able to move this back and forth at will. Um, as you can see, the maintainer is at about 31 amps steady and uh, Let's go ahead and scan this vehicle. And you can see my battery cables holding on right there, right? Pretty hot. About 140 degrees ish. And we're just going to scan the entire vehicle. Hopefully, my focus is good. And um, yeah, I did have to move the vehicle a little bit. So it, it is a little warm, but 97 degrees compared to 94 degrees. The range is real low. In case anybody's wondering what I'm looking at here. Everything looks pretty cool. Let's keep moving. I don't see any lights on, but you know what? It wouldn't hurt to take a quick look. And as you can see, there's reflective. If you guys are uh, using thermal imagers a lot, there's a thing called emissivity. And um, mirror-like finishes will reflect temperature readings. And one way you could tell is by uh, waving at it. And you can see my hand on the reflection of that shiny object anywho let's keep going i'm going to scan the entire vehicle and the lift and these have the comfort systems here and they are known to stay on sometimes but in this case it is not on that's good for us let's look at the inside door handle right Nice and clear. Let's take a seat inside. Hopefully we don't set off the alarm. We're looking at the steering wheel electronics right now, right? And everything looks green. Nice and cool, no, no signs of heat. Looking at the ignition switch. We're looking at the center console, the center panels. And the shifter can't possibly be hot. I'm waving at it. You know what that is? We already explained it. That is reflective material. Let's take a, take a look at this controller here. Got nothing. Nothing at the HVAC module. And I already prepped this vehicle to have this exposed because for those of you who don't know already, the junction box electronics, the smart fuse box, lives behind the glove box and I have that exposed. Just want to take a quick look maybe i should go around the car i don't know 
let's see there's our junction box electronics I do apologize it is a little dark and something is on <laughs> something is big time on 160 degrees I saw at one point there there are let me see I'm gonna put a flashlight here oh there's some big fuses over there am I gonna stop everything and just uh, focus on that I don't think I am I'm gonna keep scanning the vehicle because our fuse yeah sure our fuse is hot but what component is it let's see we got big fuses so it must be a big amperage our mirror heated mirror oh that's reflection guys let's not get fooled by that again that is reflective it's a mirror but it is not hot if you look at it at a different angle there's no heat over there but if I move my hand in front of the mirror you can see my hand on the reflection so uh, now that I've stressed that enough we're gonna keep moving our overhead panel is nice and clean our panel over here is pretty clean oh hold on <laughs> I know you guys saw that that's awesome Ooh, hey that sucker is hot that sucker is pretty hot that glass is hot I think we found a problem I think we found our draw what do you guys think I think we found our draw seek compact pro for the win I like that clarity let's keep going though got our battery there for the most part our battery is pretty good and I don't see any electronics over here gotta make sure we get everything right that is a reflection oh no that's the sun hitting it so it's gonna be hot we do have a uh, what do you call those things those star lights where sun comes in and whatnot whatever you want to call it yeah so I think we found our draw now we got to look at the wiring diagram take a look at the circuit and see what could possibly be uh, commanding that thing on and finally the last handle here looks like that's it our defroster is stuck on let's go take a look at some diagrams so we've got our diagram pulled up and I just want to take a quick look at exactly what's responsible for this we're gonna start with the defroster over here that is our defroster it's got a wave trap and depending on the design uh, it, all, it doesn't really matter all that matters is that it goes up this and it goes through a 30 amp fuse which is probably the fuse that we saw in the junction box and it goes through a rear window defroster relay so but if you look our positive is hot at all times and it passes through our junction uh, electronics junction box and it is originally commanded from the HVAC head unit so any one of these components can be responsible for this um, if there was an internal short in the junction box that could cause our problem but since our fuse is hot it must be coming from the relay is our relay stuck closed mechanically or is the junction box giving a path to ground on the command side of the relay and causing that relay to come on especially since we have a hot at all times over here so uh, any path to ground on that lower part of the coil will cause our relay to come on due to that hot at all times so this is where we have to stop and contact the customer and get ele electrical um, testing re 
approved before we continue. Uh, we know what kind of uh, game plan we have already in place. We're going to stick with it and see if we get an approval and uh, come back to you guys. So real quick, we're going to have to find out where that relay is. And uh, those of you who don't know, all data does provide OE uh, information. And we could do that by either typing in Fuse 47 or a connector. So X11006 is what I'm going to type in. X11006. And we have the several options here. And um, we have a Fuse 47 over here. So let's find Fuse 47 over here. We have two options. They're both V5. They appear to be the same. So let's go there. And that is, this is the OE diagram. And the good thing about this is that you can click on the component in question and check their location. So if you wanted to check the location, let's, let's just go for the relay, click on the K13, and that shows us that it is behind the glove box, in the junction box, and K13 will be this relay right here. So uh, our game plan is simply to disconnect it. Uh, the vehicle is off right now and it is pulling 20 amps right now. And if I hear clicking when I disconnect the relay, then it has a command. If I don't hear clicking and it, the power and, and the draw goes away with the relay being removed and there's no clicking, then that relay must be mechanically stuck. So vehicles right here, let's go over there and um, give that a whirl. Now, it will be very difficult for you guys to see this, so I do apologize for that, but I'll have the microphone right up close because it's on my face, obviously. And just so you guys can see, before I do anything, we have 19.2 amps drawing right there. And I'm going to... Oh, you guys can't see this, but so you guys can see what I'm talking about, that our diagrams are good. There is our relay, that green one right there in the center of your screen. That is the one that I'm going to be disconnecting. And I do apologize that you can't see, but we're going to go ahead and disconnect it here for clicks. No clicking. I disconnected it and I got no clicks. I'm gonna reconnect it. No clicks. So I'm disconnecting it now. I got the relay in my hand. Let's go see if our draw went away. Interesting. So did I get the right relay? We have 19.2 amp draw with the relay disconnected. That is absurd. There, that can only mean that either I got the wrong relay or there's an internal short to power somehow in the junction box. If we go back to the diagram, there is no other way. So let me set you guys up real quick. I already stopped my screen record. So, if we go back, we've got our, oh, this is, a, it's kind of incomplete, so let's go back to the non-OE. That's the relay that we disconnected. Could we have the wrong relay? What's going on there? How can it have power? if the relay is removed unless there's a short internal to the junction box that's kind of nuts let me see if this other option here tells me anything different it shows K13 fuse 47 we've got rear defogger right here uh, see if you guys can see this right K13 same relay 
gonna put this full screen. Did I get the wrong relay? It's the second one to the bottom. I must have the wrong relay. Let's go see. Is why service information is critical and <laughs> its interpretation. <laughs> Let's go see if we have the right relay. It's the second to the bottom. I'll tell you right now, this is kind of a different junction box. I think we'll have no choice but to go with the OE, like from ISTA, because there's something incorrect about that diagram. It is a different box. And this shows one of the pitfalls of aftermarket service information. You get, there's different variations. So you get different designs that are unaccounted for. Over here you can see that there's no relay down in the bottom corner. But service information shows us that there is in the bottom corner. So that sucks. Let's see if in that other version was any different. I could have sworn it was identical. Let's go back to Fuse 47, the top one. I'm pretty sure it was completely identical. Yeah, it shows the same thing. I'm going to have to hook up the OE tool on this thing and see what the correct relay is because it looks to me like we have the wrong relay. And this kind of stuff, if I would have ran with it, this would have led to uh, an unneeded replacement of a junction box module. So service information is critical. Um, right to repair is critical. Um, service information is ac accuracy is critical as well so let's go ahead and get the, the right stuff it's a shame um, those of you who don't have the factory stuff you can always hit library request and request that information from all data let them know that something's not right here and they'll be able to provide you with that stuff but since we have the tool we're gonna go ahead and connect that and check it that way so before I went ahead and put this thing onto it, I wanted to check the thermal imager. And I could see that my 30 amp fuse over here, and uh, right there, that green 30 amp fuse, that's fully lit in the thermal imager. And if you look on top of the 50 amp red fuse, there's a relay underneath the junction box housing. And that is where it is red hot. I'm willing to bet that that relay is internal to that junction box and it is quote unquote unserviceable. But there may be a way around that if we could get our hands on that relay. But either way, with the testing and all that, um, we would have to see, we would have to literally open it up, check to see if the, the, if there's continuity between uh, the power supply side and the load side of that relay and if it's mechanically stuck we could just change out that relay but if it has command then uh, that would suck if it is not mechanically stuck then that would be a complete in in, in on like being honestly that would be a complete waste opening it all up just to find out it's not the relay it's a command issue internal to the junction box um, that would that would suck because then we would have to just change the chunk chunk box anyway unless we found the short. Um, because it could be, technically it could be the logic board, if that's what they call it. So, we're going to present the options to the customer. We can go ahead and say, listen, we can either open it up, do all this stuff, and come out having to replace the junction box anyway, or you can replace the junction box or, like I've seen in the past, some customers, they decide, hey, you know what, I don't need a defogger, let's leave it disconnected, and um, let's leave the fuse removed and move on with our lives. Th that does happen. So, we're going to present all those options to our customer and let them decide. Um, sometimes the junction boxes can be hard to find or they could be, you know, cost prohibitive considering 
the uh, situation especially when there's a fuse there that they could just disconnect that's what happened with the last time we had one of these customer decided hey you know what i don't need the, the, the defogger let's go ahead and just leave the fuse disconnected and that's fine that's their option it's their car that's fine with us you know we diagnosed it we found out what it was that just happens you know so i think i will take a quick gander at the uh ista but more than likely it's gonna be internal to the junction box we do see in the diagram that it is internal to the junction box but you know that k13 thing really could have had us going um it is internal so there's no difference th there's nothing else we could do here uh i'm gonna go ahead and let you guys know what the customer decides to do and take it from there so the customer decided to pull the fuse and walk away um I am hesitant to even release this video because, well, it's a pretty simple uh, diag and I, I think I'm going to decide to publish it because there are still some lessons that are valuable here. Uh, not only is there uh, wrong service information uh, to be aware of, things like that that you have to, you know, stay on your toes about, um, but the usefulness of a thermal imager not only to find uh, problems but also to corroborate service information so we use the heat um, in order to find where the relay was and we found out that it was internal to the junction box so that's vital information i think it's still useful um but just keep in mind this is not the kind of video that i would like to put out there but you know what there's lessons here we can't we can't diminish we can't uh disparage the little things you know it's little details like that that keep us uh, going and getting better with time so uh, i think i will publish this video i hope it was useful the usefulness of a thermal imager uh, not only to pinpoint things but also to corroborate uh, service information and to kind of think outside the box um, we could have used the, the thermal imager to find the relay if it was external as well so there's that um, and uh, the importance of having correct service information it, it is huge um, I will leave it at that thank you all for taking the time to watch if uh, you feel I've earned your subscription consider subscribing, hit like, comment if you have any questions and until next time